Hey everybody, welcome back to the Ford. It's been a little while since we got a video out to y'all, so uh, here we are with another video, finally. Uh, we got a piece of steel in the forge, a little piece of uh, this old 38 Chrysler leaf spring. You see that little, that's the size piece we're using. Just cut out with the grinder. A block, not the knife cut out with the grinder, but a piece of stock cut out with the grinder. And here are some knives that I've been working on lately. Show me y'all. These little blades, a couple of little four inch blades. They vary slightly. One of them's a little wider than the other. They, like I say, they're not cookie cutters. They're all hand fours. They're all a little bit different. And two five inch blades. And we're gonna make another one. Nothing in particular, but we'll just see what comes out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. If our steel's up to heat, looks like it's getting close. get on the anvil and I'll start with the point. Remember, I'm not trying to make how-to videos. I'm just showing y'all how I do it. I'm sharing my my craft and my way with y'all. Right. Get it on the anvil and I'll start out with that point. Start out making the point. So I start on that corner and start rolling it over. how that's doing on the end that little fish lips always just grind that off or cut it off because if you if you're not careful and you don't pay attention and you keep hammering that over keep on hammering it this will eventually loop on over to this and you'll hammer it all into what looks like a solid piece but it won't It'll have a have a void in it a hole and you'll find that out way too late in the game if you're not real careful it'll be a a severe disappointment to you. you get it back in the fire and heat it up and we'll take the grinder and just knock that little tip right there off and get it out of the way and we'll go on with it all right so so i got that little problem area out of the way and now i'm just going to start hammering and i'm not going for anything in particular blade shape or design or whatever i'm just making a blade just playing with it as i go it's like a piece of clay just fiddle around with it until something comes out or starts to shape up that you like Way, way too thick. Unless you're one of them grinder people now. You can just about put that on a grinder and grind it any kind of bevel you want on it. starting to turn get that curve in it kind of keep it straight as you go it's thinning down but it's a pretty good size piece of steel that's pretty thick and it'll take a while to work it down it'll take me a while to work it down with a hammer just get
You can get a pretty good size blade out of it, a little piece of steel. Nice thick steel. It's got a little bit of a it's got a little bit of a yeah, a little bit of a So I'm just kind of bending it back. See how I bent it back the other way? Or it's bent this way. Just to kind of counteract the natural flow of the way the steel's wanting to run as I'm hammering it. Whew. That is thick. I bit off more than I want to chew tonight, people. That's a lot of steel. I'm going to get it. Kind of tapering it from the hand or the tame back up to the tip. Cooling off quick. I'm gonna have to hammer out the the. Uh, the tame area now because see it's getting this little dip in it right here. So I'm just keep that keep that in the direction it needs to be. Get a little more blade length out of it there. And I ain't gonna need nowhere near all that material back here for a tame. Just keep it all proportionate. See now that little dip's out of it. That was right in there. So I'll flip it back around. Well, I can flip it back around if I can keep it on now. Well, without dropping it, I better drop it. And I wore my tennis shoes today down to the floor. It's not a smart idea, but my legs and back have been killing me lately. So if you do this, I highly recommend some good leather boots because if you got that thing hot and you drop it on the toe of a pair of Nike, it's gonna go right through them and it's gonna stick to them toes or the top of your foot. We're getting there, y'all. We're getting there. I hope I ain't boring you out too much. All right, let's get another heat on it. Get me a little more back there on the hill for blade length. I want to kind of shake this up a little bit different. I'll get my trim hammer out now and get that, get that point in there like it needs to be. spice that a little bit too thick i'm gonna thin it out and pull it out just a little more i think but it's getting there can you see it okay on the camera all right let's get back in the heat all right get my little hammer here true that point up because right now it ain't much of a point I don't know if that camera's catching how quick that steel's cooling off, but it is cooling off quick.
Mm, still got a lot. There's a lot of thickness here, so I'm going to come hammer this out. I'm going to draw a little length out on it. I don't really too much care for that. So I'm going to get a little more length out of it. All right, so say I'm just going to hammer that down. Don't hammer it too much before you roll it over and get the side. You can see it's growing in length. Got to keep it straight. Looks a whole lot different than it did just a little while ago, don't it? But y'all, this is a, it's a slow, laborious process with the way I do it. I mean, there's other methods. You could have probably done had two knives done in the time it's took me to, to beat this thing out this much. I'm not real fast with a hammer either. You can tell that, but it, uh, it takes a while. But I just like doing it the old-fashioned way, the, the cheapest way I can. I don't have thousands of dollars worth of equipment down here to do it with. I don't have uh, expensive grinders. It's just a, it's a slow process. But if you, really, if you want to do it, you determine to do it, you can do it. All you need is a heat source, a hammer, and an anvil. And you don't have to go out and spend six, eight hundred dollars or a thousand dollars on an anvil. A piece of railroad track will work. I've used railroad track a couple of times uh, years ago. It works. It's not as good as a, as a flat surface, you know, because the railroad is not exactly, the railroad tie or the uh, rail is not exactly flat. It's kind of got like a little rounded uh, top to it. That can be kind of difficult. You need a good flat surface, but any big block of steel you can find, a hard steel, a hammer, and a heat source. And if you ain't got coal, if you don't have a propane forge, you can use uh, lump charcoal. You can get that at a hardware store. You can get it at Walmart. And I think most grocery stores sell it for barbecue. It'll burn up quicker than coal, but it will work. Uh, I've seen people use vacuum cleaner, the exhaust motors to blow air into the fire, a hair dryer, <coughs> excuse me, just anything you can get some airflow and it don't have to be that much air it, you'd be surprised uh, on this blower you don't have to turn it hard at all to get that you, know, you can melt it you know just burn the steel up so it don't take a whole lot of air but anyway <coughs> you don't have to you don't have to have all the equipment and all the anvils and blowers that i have it's just stuff that I have collected over the years, over the last 20 years. This is not something I, I didn't just go out and buy. It. Not a whole lot of people got that kind of expendable cash. Just to decide, hey, I want to try making a knife. Let me go out and, you know, and spend a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars on anvils and hammers and blowers uh, to try it. And maybe not, you know, decide that's not something you want to pursue anyway. So, uh, if you're thinking about doing it, if you don't have any equipment and you just want to learn, if you want to practice just to give it a shot and see how you like it, just try to, uh, you know, start out cheap and easy. And there's plenty of, I'm sure, how-to and where-to videos on YouTube you can watch to get started. But if you got a blower and anvils and forges and grinders and all that stuff, all the better. I think it's about back up the heat, you know. I forgot where I was at. I was really running my mouth. Let's see. What I need to do with this thing. Get a little more out of it. That old slag that comes off, if you hammer over it, you will hammer it back into your steel. If you ain't careful, if you got time to brush in between heats before you start hammering on it, 
it will keep your your workpiece a lot cleaner and it does help but this is going to draw out and be a pretty good size knife y'all i think like i said i i cut off a bigger hunk of metal than really what i intended to but i've got it going now so we're going to see it through we're going to go with it and back in the fire it goes y'all this thing's drawing out almost be a sword well ain't quite that long. getting there I'm just kind of putting a little taper on it from the uh, from the handle up to the point just kind of taper it down still pulling a little wink because it is thick thick back here at the heel too thick but that's one of the good things. Um, just about three sixteenths of an inch thick up here on the spine. Maybe a smidge more back here in the back than three sixteenths. You got about an eighth of an inch thickness here on the on the edge or what would be the cutting edge. Well a grinder, a big two by seventy two grinder. It wouldn't take long to throw a bevel on that knife, straighten it up and bevel it, man. You'd be way, way ahead of the game as to where I'm gonna have to in these bevels with the hammer and I, I talked about this in one video and i don't know what word i used but apparently it was the wrong word I talked about uh, drawing out out the bevels you know the edge what would be the cutting edge and i just mean you know white width ways draw the edge out and get it thinner and thinner and that's the way i have to do it and that's why i'm kind of gauging it how long to make it because if i if i start thinning them out right now and drawing them out this blade's gonna be about as wide as it is long. It's gonna look like a just a, a cube almost. So I gotta, you know, keep it proportionate and keep it thin it out and get the length right. But I like the way that blade's looking so far. So I'm drawing it a little bit more. I hope this one ain't boring y'all too much. All right, I'm gonna try to draw these bevels. Gonna widen this baby up too. Especially back here at the, the heel. That's okay though, you get a pretty good blade out of it. It's not even half done, but we're getting there. Right. Take some of that curve out of it, or she's wanting to. back to my heavier hammer work on this area back here and I'm gonna let that be it
tell you how it's bowing over on me. Got some fire on the ground there. Straighten that back up. Right, like it needs to be. Well, almost. There we go. Are y'all tired yet? I don't know. getting there. I hope the cameraman can hang. I'll work on these bevels again. Get that edge drawn out. I want to get it as thin as I can get it with the hammer. I'm gonna be thinking about lonesome dove. Big sway. Y'all remember the guy? That, you know, his old fur trapper or something on there. And set to killing these other, his buddy, Luke. So he, big sway thought he wanted to marry that girl. He had a sweet eye for her. Good film, good movie, series, whatever. One of my favorites. Clinker is starting to build up in that fire pot. Taking my heat away. I think it's a look good. Oh, front here is nice with a deer's leg bone handle, the knee joint. Looks like a violin head to me, the neck. I think that'll make a sweet looking handle, it's nice. But y'all know how that goes every time I talk about handle material, it's something opposite of it, totally opposite time I get done and change my mind 14 times. And I'm gonna keep, See how I got it <clears throat> bent this way. It's running that way. It's got a little, little dip in it there. And I did that on purpose so I can keep thinning and hitting it. And it'll, pretty soon it, uh, it should equal out by the time it gets back to a straight edge. I'll have the thickness or the thinness actually that I want on the bevels. Then I'll draw in that, uh, draw out the tang. So just a couple more beatings. <clears throat> I told y'all this is going to be a pretty labor-intensive blade. 
gonna be a lot to it. It's a big knife. It's already invoking images of the old backwoods to me. Yeah. Maybe the old fur trappers or Daniel Boone, maybe Crockett. Maybe just old Joe Blow from years ago. Check it out. Come on, y'all. It's looking good, ain't it? Huh? We're getting there. A couple more heats. Straighten that tip, the point up there is starting to roll out more than I want it to. Fix that. I'm going to come in here and bring it out just a little bit in the middle. There you go. Got the blade like I want it, sort of. Start drawing out that tang now. Oh, it's a thick piece of metal. It's kind of getting hard to see out here too. In the light at night. When I look away from that forge, that bright forge, it's kind of hard for me to see it here on the animal because it's dark. It's getting there. It's nice, one thing, being uh, working at night out here, it is a little bit cooler. It's been hotter than two rats making love in a wool sock in an August attic here lately down here. So the little breeze at night does help a lot. All right, y'all, we've got it to, um, got the blade. You see it good? I like that profile. Now, I'll tell you right now, there's gonna be a part two of this video, okay? And actually, this uh, this video or is lasting a little bit longer than I actually anticipated, but, I mean, you know, I didn't rehearse anything. Y'all are, are with me as I go along, so. But anyway, it's amazing. You know, I mean, I could even got a lot more length on this. If I got a nice thick spine back here where it needs to be thick, and it tapers on down how it needs to taper. I don't know how well y'all can tell the detail and the thickness, but anyway, you now I will come back here in this heel and do my little number with the hammer. Kind of radius in that heel. Still got to guillotine the, uh, the tang and draw that out. And that's going to be on the next video we're gonna do a, a part two of this mountain man knife we're gonna do a part two on it and i'll try to get that knocked out soon like tomorrow soon 
I don't know exactly when this video will be on YouTube, but today is Wednesday, October 13th. So I'm gonna try to get this one knocked out tomorrow, uh, part two, get this thing finished and let y'all look at it, see what you think. But anyway, the Mountain Man knife, part one, and we'll get part two out and get the finished product. I appreciate y'all sticking with me and watching. Appreciate all the subscribers. The numbers are slowly going up, and I really appreciate that. I appreciate all y'all's comments, uh, especially the ones that uh, some of you have told me that you know, my videos have helped y'all out, and I'm really proud of that. Uh, to be able to help somebody out. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification button. Y'all know the drill on that. Um, and I'll see you on the next video, part two of the Mountain Man Knife. Have a good one.